is what are we about? Um, the essence of, of uh, these uh, trainings uh, is to be able to coach uh, people to experience what we call LEAP, and uh, it's, it's called leadership and empowerment uh, to achieve profitability in every area of your life, uh, be it family, career, uh, be it uh, business, or wherever you want to experience that LEAP uh, through our trainings, you'll be able to experience it. And the, the first of our training is what we, we bring into you today, and, and that is uh, building wealth for generations. It's one of, just one of many of the trainings that we'll be doing. And, uh, and, and we'll be looking at, uh, we'll be looking at this. Uh, so one of the trainings that we'll be doing, so uh, for, for this, we'll be focusing on you being able to uh, build uh, wealth regardless of your level of income. Regardless of where you are right now, we believe you are able to, to do so and we'll be bringing to you a series of, uh, of tips that will help you to be able to achieve that over a period of time. Uh, okay, I've got uh, Adiroke putting up our hand. Is this yeah, something? Are you able to, to put in uh, your question into the chat, please? Okay. Is there anyone who can, anyone else who cannot hear me? Are you, are we all able to hear me? You can hear me, please. You can use the emoji to, to do thumbs up. Can you all hear me? Okay, uh, if you can hear me, can you uh, put up a, a thumbs up? Okay, okay, a raise of hand. I believe the raise of hand means you can hear me, I want to believe. Okay, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you. Okay, so I believe you, you are able to hear me. Okay, that's, that's all right, let's, let's continue then. Uh, you can check your audio setting and see if you can and, and check if you can hear me now. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, by way of introduction, so that's that's what we, we want to help individual to be able to achieve uh, uh, financial uh, independence and also pave the way for those who are coming behind. And we want that to start with you. Uh, uh, and our goal, as we said, it's not just for you to have a comfortable retirement, it's not for you to be able to pay for the college expense of your children, but to keep the next generation, uh, give them a platform to stand upon uh, for them to be able to uh, continue from where we might not have that kind of platform, but we have an opportunity to be able to uh, give uh, those who are home behind us that uh, kind of platform. And today we'll be going through the following things, quite, quite a lot to go through. So I will probably run a little bit and where, where I think I need to slow down, I will slow down uh, for us to be able to understand me uh, and catch what I'm saying. Uh, just about me, <laughs> it's a long one. I'll just summarize it for you. Uh, uh, the, I'll read the first line and then you, then maybe when you get this, the, the recording later, you can uh, know a little bit more. Uh, I have over 20 years experience in enterprise. Uh, um, uh, IT uh, consultancy. I uh, currently uh, have worked with uh, both public and private companies in the United Kingdom over the last uh, uh, 15 years, that about, if no more. Uh, and, um, and also, concerned in, in the area of trading, uh, I have I registered my first account as I have one of the slides about, uh, about 20, 2006, there about. And um, and I've, I've started different companies, IT companies, uh, fashion retail companies, arts retail companies, and, and a lot of other platforms. I, ha I have an MSc uh, in uh, business strategy, leadership, and, and, and change. And, and I have a corporate certification as a Scrum Master um, in, in business analysis uh, and the rest of them. And I'm also, uh, by the grace of God, uh, a member of RCCG, where I have a title, I will say, as an assistant pastor. <laughs> and uh, no, no. Okay, so what's the motivation? The motivation is uh, 
is that I always thought the, the making money from the stock market is for big people, people who really, really have a lot of money to invest. Uh, but later through education, and I was able to understand that anybody can actually put money in. And you can actually put in as little as a hundred pound into the market and start making some money from it. And, and when I discovered this and I started it uh, from as little as a hundred pound, and over the years, uh, I've seen great results. And I thought I shouldn't keep this to myself alone, uh, that I should uh, uh, share, share, share this wisdom. I thought, uh, you know, like uh, you have in the last line, I wish I'd known this uh, over the last uh, 10 years. I think I have, I will have gone further than uh, I am right now with my uh, portfolio. And uh, here's a screenshot of when I first opened my, my first uh, trading account. Uh, that was in September 2006. And, uh, and before moving to the UK in 2008, about two years, then we we're going to Cyber Cafe to, to, to trade. And it was tough because the internet would just go up while doing so. Uh, but coming to the UK, I continued in, in trading. But later, I discovered the difference between trading and investing. And that's what I'll be showing us today. Uh, because uh, I've moved on from trading into actually becoming an investor, becoming a shareholder, earning dividend uh, across uh, tens and tens of companies across the world. And, and I believe you can do the same. It doesn't take uh, so much to do it. It just takes somebody showing you a few things and you are able to do that. Uh, I want to believe uh, I've got two hands raised up. Are they legacy hands or, or are they, uh, do you have questions? Okay, if not, okay, thank you very much. So, um, so what is generational wealth? And this is when you are able to uh, accumulate as assets that you're able to pass on to people who are coming behind you, either to, to children, to grandchildren, to great grandchildren. And we have families uh, on the screen who have done that uh, over, over the years. And the Walton family is one of them, the uh, Luria, the Mars family, the, the Duke of West, Westminster is, is, is a family that you've been able to pass on uh, wealth to, to generations. And the other families are. Uh, who are not that prominent. If you still go to, to Forbes list of, of billionaires today, the, Wal the Walmart family, you still have like six or seven of them uh, within the top 150 billionaires in the world. And that's, um, and that's what uh, a lot of people have learned to do. And it's not rocket science to do so. And what they end up having is to have a family uh, office where they, you know, they, they provide financial advice for everybody within the, the generations of that family. And that's something you, you want to him to do at the end of the day. And so everything they want to know about, about, about their finances, there's an office where they all go to, they have that and they manage their portfolios for them. And there's, you know, it's more like a top party uh, uh, managing it for the family or it's still owned uh, uh, by the family. And that's how they sustain wealth through, um, through the generations, through their generations. Um, why, why don't people, and I want you to contribute here, why don't people do this? Why don't we do this? Uh, why didn't I do it? Maybe it was lack of knowledge, as you can see on the board. If you, you, we, we don't kind of do this due to a lot of reasons. And it could be that you think you don't earn, earn enough, enough income. It could be that you have, uh, uh, I'm still paying debt off, so I can't, I can't do this. It could be that you think that you have a lot of time in your hand. And um, you know, when I'm ex, when I'm 40, 50, I'm going to start. Uh, it could be that you lost money in the past and you, you still don't feel good about uh, doing anything, uh, doing anything with the market. Uh, it, it could be that, okay, I, I'm making personal contribution at work and I think that should be enough. Uh, if I tell you how much uh, the, the government's um, state pension is, you will know that it can't take you anywhere. You, you have like 9,000 per annum from the state pension. Um, okay, again, you might have workplace pension. That could be a lot more than that. But at the end of the day, you probably could do better also having something parallel to all of those. It could be that, but don't worry, the system will take care of myself. My children will, will get student loan and probably the government will take care of, take care of me when I'm older. Uh, I think you probably deserve a, a, more, a, 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 a better life at retirement than what uh, system will be able to provide for you. And so what, what, what might be your reason for, for not starting up to now? Mine was uh, lack of, of knowledge of what to do. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know this kind of opportunity was available to me. And so I didn't start. If you want to put, if you don't mind, if you want to put in the chat, you can put a few of those reasons in the chat uh, as, we, as we go along. 
Okay, uh, why a lot of people is they don't understand what they're supposed to do. People might have money. I can say I have five thousand somewhere, I have ten thousand somewhere. Even, I don't even know what to do with it. Uh, but today, I think we will be able, uh, by the grace of God, show you a few things that you can do with it. Okay, the, the next the, the next thing is that some people think, uh, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow, worry about itself, because yeah. Because some of us who are Christian, we say, well, God says the boss, the boss of the of the hair don't sow and they don't they don't reap, they don't even store anywhere, but and God provides for them. So all these things just just leave tomorrow to God to take care of. But but there's something that we also need to know that the same that that God won't do for you what you can do for yourself. And He said you should go to the hands, learn the way of the hands, and be wise. What do they do during summer? They gather food. They don't need anyone to tell them that they need to gather food. And then when, uh, when it's time of, uh, when it's uh, winter, they, they, they gather what they've sown. And so there is also a winter and summer season also for, for us as human beings. There's a need for us to prepare for such a season as much as we know that God is our source and is the one who can pro 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 provide and protect uh, whatever we have. We need to uh, make an effort and prepare for the future. Okay, and um, why generational wealth? Okay, it's uh, uh, it's God wants us to have it. God wants us to prosper. Uh, and for those who are who are not of faith, uh, and I know you know that there's a need for you to to, to do that. Uh, he also wants us to take responsibility uh, and, and and leadership for whatever we do. Uh, there's something there in red that I saw. And if my wife saw it on, on, on Instagram and she showed me and I was like, I'm going to put this on my slide. He said, I, I, I am from a poor background, ends at 30. So after that, you are the background. So you should be the one, you know, forming a foundation for people after you. Your excuses of not of coming from a poor background ends when you are 30. And in fact, it ends when you are 20. Once you are out of university, that excuse of I didn't have a background, you know, or you have a poor background, hence at, at 25 actually. And then you are now meant to, okay, be the background and be able to give other people a pedestal to stand on, a state to stand on. And it's, it's a matter of stewardship. Uh, do you eat all that God gives to you? Uh, do you eat all that comes into your hand? But part of what you receive, part of it is a seed for you. If you're a farmer and all your harvest, you eat it every year and you don't keep seeds for next planting season you're probably going to have a problem when planting season comes. So there's a need from everything you, that comes into your hand. Part of it is a seed. Part of it is a seed. And you'll be a good man to leave inheritance for your children and children's children. Okay, and, and we can see the law of harvest which sustains the world. It's a cycle that you don't want to break of planting, of harvesting, and of planting, and of harvesting. Okay. And um, we also have here that we have a lot of people who didn't uh, inherit their wealth, who built it. Uh, as we can see, LVMH, Louis Vuitton, Mohe and SC, uh, the owner, you can see common names that we are familiar with. We hear on a daily basis, uh, the founder of, of, of Google, Oracle, Larry Ellenson, Jack Ma, of Alibaba, of Big Gate and Steve Bomber of Microsoft. And, uh, popular Elon Musk of SpaceX, Tesla, um, and then and then of a uh, in, in new one he started like this week, X.ai. Uh, That's a new company he just started. And, and then we, we can see here, how can you become a millionaire? Um, well, it could be that you, it could be that you win a lottery. We know, if you look at what I have here, the chances kind of uh, diminishes uh, uh, from, from the top, the, the, the chance is, is very, very slim across that out because uh, I don't play and I won't encourage you to play. Uh, and then you have inheritance or gift. Uh, you could be an executive or a multinational and you've been giving a lot of shares, like the CEO of, of Microsoft and of, of, of Google and, and the rest of them. They are probably, they are, they are millionaires. But, but you, you can start a business, but we know that, you know, the, the chance of, Having uh, a, a bill that become a, a million dollar or pound or billions is also uh, is possible, but uh, it's not the hold is is not so much for uh, or in your favor. And then you could become good at what you do, which I think is something every one of us can achieve. 
can become very good at what you do and then you can your money can work for you and there's everyone on this platform can do that regardless of the sector where you work there is no work of life uh, that has not made a millionaire of people people have been millionaires selling pepper people have become uh, have become millionaires uh doing moi moi or or, or or selling wood or or being a cleaner or being uh, or being um, an IT person or being a doctor or whatever it is that, that, you, that, you, that you want to do, you know, every aspect of life can make a millionaire of you and can make your money work for you. And so let's go into, 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 into that. And I'm standing on the, on the shoulders of, of people today. Uh, our people have encouraged me to do this. Uh, uh, Pastor Dom, Pastor Iwaju, my wife, if all pushed me to do this because I just want to make my money without making so much, you know, so much, uh, you know, but I think there's a need. I've been pushed to, to and be encouraged, I would say, uh, with these people who have encouraged me to, to say, to, to put this together. And I'm happy doing so. And I'm sure we all uh, uh, benefit from this at the end of the day. So we can see in front of us uh, a list of about eight things that are pillars that you must have in place to be able to build generational wealth. There are things that we, we need to understand, we need to consistently do. They are not things that you do once and you stop because they are pillars. There's a need for us to maintain them, to keep them standing all through the process of building wealth. And the first of them, which I will talk about, is our mindset. Uh, is, is, is our mindset. If you go for any seminar, you see them talking a, a lot about, about mindset, about psychology of money, but you getting it right because poverty is more of a mental blockage than what is around you. It's more of an internal thing than an external thing. So there is a need for you to be able to break free from that limitation of it is not possible, it is hard, you know, and that's what they call the learned, the learned helplessness. That even when you now have an opportunity, you can't seize this anymore because you, you, you learn to become helpless about things. And so there's a need for, for us to first of all break through, break free from that and to understand that 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 you can do it and you're able to, to do it. So I'm not so much of a motivational speaker, but for those who are of, of faith. Uh, it is a covenant blessing for you. Uh, and then to live an inheritance for the next generation, it is something that God has empowered us all to do. And, uh, and then, uh, then, then you also trust, some people call it uh, having a, an hunch, but I, I'll call it divine direction in whatever you do. And that is the first foundation that you must have. You must be able to be comfortable uh, being worthy. Don't resent the rich. Don't, it's not everybody that steals. Don't let's stop resenting those who, who are rich because you can't be too. And when you, are, when you become one, people will resent you too. And so it's, you must follow up free our mindset from, from that. And that's the very first foundation. I'll move on from there. Got a lot of slides to go through. Uh, and the, the, the next part is that you need financial education, continuous financial education. Uh, ignorance is very, very expensive. Uh, very expensive because the mistake you made when you don't know It'd be a lot more. I've made, uh, I've wasted, if not close to thirty thousand dollars or pounds, about twenty five thousand pounds, doing the wrong thing, because I just wanted to understand this, and I spent so much money trading when I'm supposed to be investing, uh, uh, and that was a wrong route to go. Some people might probably be comfortable with trading, but I'm probably one on one of them. Uh, I've wasted a lot, when I say a lot and a lot of money, either borrowed money, credit card money, all of that to trade and just once you, until I understood that there is a better way. Uh, and there is a passive way where you can just put something somewhere and go to sleep and that money keeps working for you. That you don't need to open your platform on a daily basis to do, to do uh, day trading. And so, um, and so it's, 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 it's very important when someone has passed through that route before and is able to hold you by the hand and show you what you're supposed to do. And from there, you can take it on from there. And then uh, it, it takes a, a, a trained eye to be able to, to spot opportunities. So invest in your education, uh, do as much as you can do to, to learn on a daily basis. Yes, you are professionals. You have what you do on a, on a, on a daily basis. I have what I do, I'm an IT consultant. But apart from that, you know, I pick up on other things just to educate myself 
or you know on that path of, of financial um, uh, freedom it increases your confidence when you know and you know it provides guidance for you and how do you know through training through mentorship leveraging on other people's experience and you will be leveraging on mine uh, uh today and going forward and then read some books some four common books very popular books which i am sure a lot of us have read in the past and they they become they are they are, they are they kind of they are timeless. They have been there, and you know a lot more more, more other books that I, I've not I've read that I've not uh, uh, included here. So let's try and educate ourselves. Continuous education is another pillar that you must have. First one, your mindset. Uh, second is number two uh, pillar. Number three, you must end something uh, because it can't just fall on your lap. It could be small, but you must end something. So you need to create an income for yourself first, uh, and then that represents you getting a constant seed on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, depending on how you are paid. And then you need to protect that source of income. Uh, you, don't, you don't mess up where you eat, and so you need to protect where that is coming from. And then you need, and wherever you are right now, like, like at, if you have a chance for me to, 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 to have a chat with you, I'll tell you where you have today is a bridge. And you don't build a house on a bridge. You don't pack a lorry on a bridge, you know. A bridge is for you to keep moving on, just for you to cross from one from one place to the other. And so, when you're on a bridge, where you are right now, your current job is a bridge, is an instrument God has given to you to get to where you want to go to. And so, don't don't just stay there. Don't build an edifice on that bridge. Keep moving, okay? Um, and then increase your earning, retrain, you know, move on to to, to new area. Of of, um, of of training, I will show you a slide after this. What uh, what what have been my movement uh, uh, in the UK? Create more streams of income, uh, spend more than you earn, and then and then you it's another pillar that you must have. And I, I put this up, which is uh, which has been my journey uh, starting. And I'm sure a lot of people might be able to identify with this journey uh, for themselves. Uh, starting with as a warehouse operative. Moving into healthcare, uh, moving to become a, a support analyst after a series of trainings and certifications, um, you know that's been able to adapt myself to what is happening here. Even though I've been doing that uh, back in my home country, but I have to retrain again uh, to be able to to get into that first graduate uh, role, and then moving on to become depth up and moving on to become a business analyst and to become a consultant in that area, and then moving on from there. Uh, to become a solution architect. I'm not that yet, but that is where I have my eyes on next. And, and you know, with all these steps, is you have you experience increase in income, isn't it? Uh, you experience increase in income. And uh, uh, if I, and I know that if I move on to become a solution architect, I know that I would again increase what I had. So that's so I see where I am right now. It's not the final position. I'm moving on to the next thing. And I want us to have that same kind of mindset. Let's keep moving. Retrain yourself. Look for an area where we are look for an area that that that, that is no people. A lot of people are not into in your in, in your sector, and go and it could be hard for you to do the training. But at the end of the day, you are standing out in the midst of so many people, and very few people become a millionaire working a nine to five job for someone else. But there's something I said we can do. We can put our money to work for us two four seven, and becoming a millionaire. Uh, and being able to pass that on to generation uh, becomes very easy for us. Okay, moving on quickly to the next pillar. Uh, this is financial control. You've been able to control what you earn. You have your mindset uh, being worked on. You, you, you have your education. You're earning something. You have a seed from there. You need to control what is coming in. Uh, it's a, what each of us calls our necessary expenses will always grow to equal to our income unless we protest to the contrary. Have you noticed that when you were on 1,000, it wasn't enough? When you were on 3,000, you said, ah, there are other things to do. When you were on moving on to 5, 4, 5, 5,000, 5, 7,000, it seems as if something is still coming around to take it from you. There's a need for you to protest. Those expenses will look necessary. The bigger car will look necessary. The bigger house will look so necessary. That 
person you need to be to, to give something to us. That thing you need to do will look so necessary. So your, your expense will always automatically grow to equal to your income unless you intentionally protest against it and say, no, this, this should be for this. Should, this should. So you have to be in that control by putting in a budget to say, this is the budget that goes into this, this is the budget that goes into that. And we have the very popular with the 50, 30, 20 rule, uh, which is talking about 50% uh, into very important expenses like your rent, which you cannot do without. And I have a, a kind of simulation for that here. Uh, about 50% there about your circumstances might be different, where you're hiring your journey might be different. Or, and then uh, you have 50% into that, which is very important. You cannot have, have, have afford, have, avoid. You have 30% uh, into that, which is discretionary, which you can avoid. But you, you, might be, you might need to do it. That's the one in blue. Uh, the one in green is the one you can run away from. Uh, this one is discretionary. And this, is, this, this aspect is 20%, which is either for service investment and for uh, either you're paying off uh, a loan or a credit card. And so if you are able to, and I have another one here, if your income is not that much, you have this. So if you are living, if you have this income and you are living in a house that is double this, you need to do something about it. It's kind of out of control. Uh, so you, that's the 50, uh, 30, 20 rule that you need to subject your, so meaning that this by all means must always come out, out of your income. Uh, regardless of what it is. It could be 50 pounds. It could be 25 pounds. But from that habit, what you are trying to do is to train yourself. Don't, if you don't train yourself to, to do that, when your income doubles, your expense will autom automatically double. Uh, if, you, if you triples, your expenses will automatically triple. Unless you form the habit of putting a, some seed, a seed aside on a monthly basis. If it is 10 pounds, put 10 pounds. You can say it's nothing, but you are forming an habit that once you now earn more, it be difficult for you to break that habit. And if that is a, one thing that you take out of this out of this training, I think it's worth it. Uh, let's form that mindset of knowing that something is for you to keep and it's a seed that you must not eat so that you can, you can plant and have an harvest uh, tomorrow, okay? And then the next pillar in building wealth is, uh, is, is investment. Is you actually uh, putting to use that which you have put aside. Is you planting that which you have put aside. A, a, a single seed can become a forest if well managed. Uh, so that means you need to automate your savings. Uh, you, you, need to, you need to put uh, investment into either paper investment, either real estate, or in either into starting or buying a business and, and avoiding personal debts. Uh, those are ways for you to be, those are the next pillar where you continuously you continuously uh, put uh, the seed from your income into. And we'll get into, into showing you a practical, we'll get into, into showing a few things uh, very soon. Uh, just running through this. So uh, next we have, and, and the next pillar uh, is uh, that of wealth preservation. And you don't want to have it all today and tomorrow you back to zero to, to, to zero. You know, I, I'm not your typical um, uh, YouTube YouTuber. I followed one during the, the, the pandemic, and and this guy put all his is uh, I thought it was a smart guy, so I, I I listened to him until towards the end of of 20, 2021, and he put all his money into a single stock, and he lost it, and that and that stock dropped for five percent. And, and he lost it. And I just I just looked at him and I, I shook my head out. So there's a need for you to be able to understand risk management, very, very important. And, um, and then being able to, uh, to diversify your portfolio, you do that based on sector, you do that based on uh, geographical uh, location and based on a lot of uh, factors, even based on age, that's the way you diversify based on, on what household you have. And then there's a need for you to constantly balance your portfolio so that when a sector is affected, it doesn't wipe away whatever uh, you have been able to accumulate. And uh, there's a risk that goes with age also. And there's a need to, to get a, a, a tax advice so the government doesn't come, use the back door to come and uh, take away what you have worked for.
And that's just the meaning of you taking a risk. So the seventh pillar is succession planning. And these are things you also need to know. How do we transfer this? How do you form trust? How do you form shareholding? How do you form a family office? How do you prepare will? And how do you transfer uh, this to, to, the next, to the next generation? You know, time will fail us to, to go deeper into how to do all of this. And some of them, you will need an expert uh, in those areas to be able to advise you on them. And, and the eighth pillar is giving, charitable giving. Uh, there is blessing in giving. Earlier, hardly is there a, 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 a rich person, either of faith or, or not of faith, that does not do this. And uh, for us, or for those of us who have faith, uh, it's, uh, it, we know that there is a blessing attached to giving. Look for a cause you are passionate, uh, that touches your heart, you are passionate for, and give towards it. Uh, there is blessing in it. When you do that, uh, it will come back to you in many folds. And in fact, you are helping a lot of people when you do that. So these are, these are the eight pillars that you need to maintain uh, while you are building wealth. There are things that it doesn't go away. It happens on a daily basis in your life and you need to maintain that. Then again, we look at five phases uh, of mastering the five phases. And these are phases, so you can be in, in multiple phases, you can be in, in a phase at, at a particular point in time, but this, are, you know, this is you making progression in your journey towards uh, building wealth for generation. Phase one, say understanding of money. One of the things we are doing right now is us trying to understand what is this thing? Uh, what is this paper all about? And then again, we talk about mind, uh, mindset research. That's the phase we have right now. And that's why we are here all gathered together trying to, to have a reset and trying to understand uh, how we can, where we can put the, those uh, extra money we have into. And then we need to, the face of you breaking old habits and forming new habits, it could be hard. And, and they also being able to bring your, your spouse on the same page with you. Uh, some will not, will not be on the same page with you until they start seeing the results. And that's good. But they, they say also always a need to have that synergy within a home to be able to move faster and further. Okay, um, and then becoming uh, becoming debt free uh, is also part of what you do in your phase one. You want to become debt free within the, the next twenty four months. Uh, you you have to do all you can and start working towards uh, being able to do that. Uh, there is a system that has worked uh, for us, and then which uh, we probably uh, I don't have enough time to share it uh, today. But there are systems out there that you can use uh, to work your way out of of that. And, and again, the next one is the, on the, uh, the phase one, you want to have a reserve fund. So the first thing you want to do after this, this, this class is to start putting together a fund. It's your reserve fund is what, no more than a thousand or if you can do more than a thousand, you start from a thousand. And that helps you from going into credit card. That helps you from going into overdrafts. And that you have that kept somewhere that if there's anything, anything should come up, you don't dip into credit card or into overdraft. You can usually, you can just take from there and use. And the next thing you're gonna do on the phase one is that you open an investment account. That 20 pounds, that 50 pounds, that 100 pounds that you're able to save in a month, that 200, 500 pounds, you are putting aside into an investment account. So that's the phase one. And the phase two is that uh, is you are now building a contingency fund. Some people call it emergency fund, but I don't like to use the word emergency. I just call it contingency fund. And that is your three to six months uh, income. Your, that's the next uh, step or the next stage that you have. You want to have aside your, your three to six months uh, expenses uh, that you, you, if one is in between job, go for it, you have something to fall on without. Uh, somebody was, I was having a chat with somebody yesterday. They said some, a, lot, a lot of people are two events away from, you know, being, becoming very poor, get into financial trouble, two events away, some one event away, and they are in serious trouble. So we don't want that to be uh, to be uh, to, to be a uh, case. So there's a need for us to do. So second phase, you want to build that fund that can cover you for the next three or six months in case uh, you are in between job. And then you want to automate your savings. You want to get to that level of at least 10%. You're going to 20%, but you want to get to at least 10%. And then you want to get more mentoring, understand what it is uh, to, to pick a stock or to, to, to know a, a very good investment. You want to start consolidating, consolidating your, your investment. You want, to start, you want to open a fund for children's uh, uh, education. Um, 
Okay, I can see a few. Let me check the chart and see a few. Okay, lack of information, lack of money. Um, uh, we cannot chat. Chat says chat disabled. Um, okay. Uh, if you if you are not able to chat, you can try again. I think I enabled it after some people came in, and so you probably uh, tried again. You might be able to do that now. Um, some still can do it. Maybe maybe if you if you log in and log out and log in again, you might be able to chat because I enabled it after some people uh, have joined. So so let's let's give that a try. So apologies for for that. Okay. And uh, we have um, minimum. Okay, so you have your minimum household income of, of fifteen to twenty percent. So we, we, we have uh, phase three, which is you diversify, diversifying your your portfolio. At this point, you understand what you are doing to a very large extent. Uh, you you want to diversify into different sector. You want to try different uh, uh, investment instrument. You want to start targeting uh, dividend. Uh, kind of a uh, stock like I started doing now. Uh, I, you know, a few weeks ago, I was just buying a lot of dividend stock. Even though I know I know the advantage and disadvantages, I was like, okay, you kind of feel you are old now. You need to start earning dividend. And I was buying more dividend stock than than the ones that that don't pay dividend. And then you have a better understanding of what you're doing. You know, a bad one from a good a bad investment, a good investment. Uh, you're trying to pay off at this point you want to pay off your your the mortgage of your home not the one that you use for investment of your primary residence and then you uh want to be sure you are putting away into your investment as high as 15 to 20 percent of your income okay and in fact there's, there's a rule that that's that is 70 20 10 rule where at some point or almost 70 percent of your income is going into is going into investment and 20 uh, into other, uh, 30 into other expenses. Uh, because you need to protest and not allow your expenses to grow with your income. Okay, the next phase uh, is uh, the fourth phase is, is when you, you now go into geographical diversification. So you, you don't just have property in the United Kingdom, you have property in the US, uh, you, have, you have property uh, across the world. At times I look at people who live in Ukraine and who are built wealth over the years. And there's one in Ukraine right now, all their real estate value has gone to almost zero. And they probably wish they had one in the, U in the US or, or in the UK. And you're able to start, you know, kind of going across borders and going to more sophisticated investment, you become an angel investor. That's when you put money into startup companies, high risk, but you know what you are doing. It's probably 1% of your wealth or 2% of your wealth. So you know what you are doing. You're looking at multiple streams of income. You start going into estate planning and everything that you need to do. And finally, uh, you, you need to mentor the next generation. And that's a phase that you can actually start now. We need to start that now. And in fact, we'll be doing trainings for people who are, who are 13 to 17, who are, who are young people, teenagers. We'll be doing training, free training for them to be able to understand what this is. We don't want our children to wait when they are 25 and they've learned all the bad habits before they start trying to unlearn it. So we'll be doing trainings for 13 year old to 17 year old. We will let you know once uh, that training package is ready. And so succession planning, setting up a family office that will manage uh, your wealth and, and enjoying a very wonderful retirement. And that is what we want. Okay, so let me, let's go into, into the next phase, which is, uh, us looking at uh, the, the cash flow contract. This is a very important concept that, that, that uh, Robert Kiyosaki came up with. And uh, understanding of it has really helped me. And I, I thought I should also share that. So you have the EBSI uh, in this quadrant. Some of us who are, if you read that book, uh, you probably know the E is employment. Uh, that is where you start earning from, or depending on what you do. The next, the B is business, the S is self-employed, and the I is uh, investment uh, sector. And this is how uh, uh, I can explain this to you. So if you look at the, uh, the E sector, which probably a lot of us are in, 
uh, is when you have a job. You get paid uh, for, for, for that job. Okay, and uh, but you have no leverage because you must go to work. Okay, and then you have the one on that, which is the S, where I probably find myself now. You own a job. Okay, you are self employed, you own a job, you have no leverage, and you don't work, you don't make money. Okay, so because you are trading your time for money, and there's no leverage for you. But you look at the other side of the quadrant where you have the B and the I. B is where you, you own a business, you own a system, and people work for you. And so you leverage on people. Now you multiply, you are multiplying your efforts, not just you, but a lot of people are duplicating what you are able to do, and they are bringing money for you. And then the, the other part is the I part, which you are an investor, and your, market, your money is working for you. And that is what passive a passive income. So you don't have to work. Your money is working for you in that area. And the good thing is that you can be in the E, you can be in the E quadrant, and then you are putting your money into the I quadrant, or you are putting your money into the B quadrant. So even though you are still in the E quadrant, and eventually you want to move into either the S and then move into the B, while you are still maintaining the I. And if you remain here for a very long time, you make sure you are doing this and you are doing this, okay? So that's what this uh, uh, cash flow co quadrant is, is all about. So you, you have no leverage here. You have no leverage here because you own a job. Okay, if you don't work, you don't get paid. Then you have people working for you here. You have your money working for you here, and this is where you want to be. And anybody in these other three quadrants can be here where their money is working for them and they have passive income coming in. And so what does leverage, what, the, what, what are the advantages of, of, of you leveraging? Is you, you have, you know, equals to multiplied effort. Uh, you have a multiplier effect and you have people time, people, uh, other people's time, other people's knowledge, other people's wisdom, other people's influence, other people's money. All of that is working for you when you understand what leverage is all about. You're able to leverage on all of those things uh, to work for you to, to bring about a multiplier effect into your uh, effort of uh, building wealth for generations to come. Okay, and then let's move on into some other exciting, more interesting stuff. Uh, I will share my, my browser in a moment and you, and you can play around with this compound interest uh, calculator. You can, uh, let me, I can put in the chat for, for us to be able to use um let me let me copy that and put in the chat is is is, is, is my, that's my favorite uh uh calculator and i'll just put to everyone okay you can you can either use it now or use it later and so if that pops up for you that will probably activate the chat for you if it's not yet activated uh okay no okay uh, i think if you probably uh, go out and come in again maybe that will allow you to be able to uh to 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 be able to to chat apologies that i you know i activated that very late and at and i probably have not activated the videos too i should have uh, from the beginning so lessons uh learned for the next uh, session okay so i would uh, i'll bring up my my browser and um, let me close that are not relevant. And okay, are you able to see? Okay, so I'll click on this. Copy that into the chart. And that's this is a compound interest calculator, which is the next thing. If you want, you want to make. Uh, compound interest work in your favor, okay? You want to make compound in interest work in your favor. And if I put up the, 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 the slides again, somebody call it the eighth wonder of the world. It's the eighth wonder of the world. And uh, you know, the popular billionaire Warren Buffett, he said, my wealth has come from a combination of living in America, some lucky genes and compound interest. 
And uh, Benjamin Franklin described it so well. He said, money makes money, and the money that makes money makes more money. So it's your money making money and money making, the money that that has made is making more money for you. And that's the, that's the power of compound interest. Those who understand it, earn it. And if you don't understand it, you pay it. Because that's what you pay when you have uh, loans and debts. You pay compound interest. Uh, when you have credit card, it's a minimum, it's a minimum payment is 1%. You know what they are doing. And then the, the law of compound interest come, come, comes in and you are paying uh, for compound interest. But if you understand it, you earn compound interest. So I, I've done some simulation here, which we just, I'll just pick an example there and then we'll go through on the browser. Uh, if you have a baby right now, congratulations. If you open an investment account for that baby uh, with a thousand, and you put in a monthly to, uh, investment of 200 pounds into that investment for a yearly return of an average of 10%. And uh, the 10% 10, 10 I will explain that to us. So the, the average of 10% is what the market has achieved, uh, achieved uh, between 8 to 10% in the last 75 years. So it's, that's been proven that uh, on the average, you have 10% return over a long period of time. Not when you put in money uh, in, uh, today and you want to put it at the next one year, no. You, you, could, you could, you know, so you have to give it time. So in the last 75 years, the S&P 500, which is the top 500 companies in American stock exchange, both NASDAQ and, stock and, and New York Stock Exchange are put together, uh, is, is the return on the average, the S&P has shown on the average 10% over the last 75 years. Okay, and so we use that, we use that as the benchmark. So the, for, for a period of 18 years, uh, that child on his or her way to the university will have 126,000 in that account. And what do you do? It means that child will not, need a, will not need a student loan. And that child can actually become a landlord from year one and can house and can uh, be, be, be up tenants. Some of it is made as tenants in this university city where you can buy a small, uh, a, a two bed or a three bed uh, apartment for, for the child. And from, from, from year one in the college, they have a part of their own, they, are, they don't have student loan debt and they are collecting rent from their mates. And so that's, that's what ideally what you want to achieve. And that will, will be 200. If you can afford 200 pounds every, every month for, for, that, for, that, for your son, your daughter, I say put thumbs up and I want to do that right away. So we can, we can simulate that. Another one which I want us to, to see the power of compound interest is uh, if, for instance, you are, you are planning to a retirement and uh, which there is what is called genius SIP. I will explain that uh, in later slides where you can even open a retirement account for your child now. If you put to 200 and when they are 18, they can start putting it themselves. I think they are 55, they have 5.9 million in that account. Uh, you do it for the first 18 years and it's about to then to continue after 18 years, after they are 18. And then you give them, you know, you give them a lift in life. And from, and from that uh, 126, they continue from there. They, by the time they are 55, before they are 55, they are, before they are, by the time they are 40, they're ready to retire actually. By the time they are 55, they already have almost 6 million in their account at a, at, at a return rate of 10% per annum. And then you can do the same thing. If you are 30, if you are 30 now, and then you, you are, you're just starting out and you can put in 3,300 into your uh, ISA account or your SIP account for the next 30, uh, 30 years when you are 60, you'll probably have uh, about 700,000 uh, sitting in that account for you. And that's a good uh, retirement um, uh, money. And then, and then again, so I've, I've now done a withdrawal, a withdrawal simulation here where you started out at 30 or 40, and then you put in this amount by time for another 30 years, you, are, you have 2.2 million. And that and at, at the age of 60, you stop putting the money and you start withdrawing money from it without putting any money again. All your life, you will not finish withdrawing that money. Uh, if you are, if you live to be a come hundred, you still have 59 million to pass on to your children. That's my blowing, but it is possible. Uh, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen. I've seen it that it is possible. And that's why I put together this, this particular class. And so I, I would bring up now, let's simulate one or, one or two of, of, of the scenarios we have here. 
just for us to have, uh, let me look at the time. Uh, yeah, just about an hour in. Okay, so I will bring in, bring up my browser again. Okay, so we, we have we have this um, we have this calculator. The currency doesn't matter. If you start an account with a thousand at ten percent rate, and let's say you are thirty now and you put do for the next thirty years, and then you put in I think I said uh, if you put in at say five hundred, let's say let's start with smaller figure. We can always increase it. You put in three hundred on a monthly basis. Uh, the, your company's trade interest is on an annual basis and you calculate in the next 30 years you will have uh, that amount in your account if you increase that a little bit you say 400 what do you have you have 900 in your account and this is how it will build up or true it means the actual money you put in uh the actual money you put in uh is uh this is what we've put in, 144. You know, your compound interest, I've done this for you. This is your compound interest. I've done this for you, okay? So if you put in 500 on a monthly basis, you have, you have this amount, and then you, you also, you, compound interest has put this, this for you, and then you have, um, you have that. So at, at this point, if you, at this point, let's assume you are now 60 years old. So you are starting with, with one, 1, 000, 1, 1, 50. So if you do that this way, one, one, two, three. Okay, at same interest rate, you are at 40 to become 100 years old and you don't, you withdraw. At this point, maybe you, you, you give yourself a decent retirement of say 70,000 or 60,000 per annum, what would that be uh, on a monthly basis? Um, let's say you, you, you are 500 on a monthly basis. And then uh, if you calculate that, so that's withdrawing 6,000 for you on a monthly basis. By the time you are, but, you know, in a nutshell, that money keeps growing because because the rate of withdrawal is less than the rate of is, is, is a lot less than the rate the rate of uh, a return. The rate of return is higher than the you know than the than the rate of of withdrawal of you know from that money, and so you are able to to continue to to build on it. So you are you are withdrawing on a yearly basis. Uh, what is more than? Uh, let me see. What is more than um, what you are putting in? So you start. So this is one around fifty thousand. So I made a mistake there. Uh, this sorry, this should be 1.5. I was wondering. So, so you start with 1.5 when you are 60. Your rate of interest is 10 percent. You you live to become a hundred. You are withdrawing 5,000 on a monthly basis, and I will do that calculation again. Okay. So, this is what you have. Your your value of investment remains at 48. Million, so you have sixty thousand per annum. You are withdrawing from that money, which is more than how much the money is handing for you. Is any interest of uh, one fifty thousand for you on a yearly basis? I'm just withdrawing sixty thousand out of it. All through, you still have forty eight thousand to pass on to the next generation from that account, and this is very much possible by the time you are sixty. And this is something you want to work towards. Uh, that even when you are, no matter how much you withdraw, you are just spending part of your interest. From that money, uh, and in fact, there's some fixed deposits with that kind of money that will hand you up to ten percent. Even if you don't want to take the risk of, of, of the stock market, you can put that money into a fixed savings, that a, a targeted savings that gives up to eight percent, ten percent. You know, you might be able to even achieve achieve uh, withdrawing this, just spending interest uh, to your retirement, and that money will keep growing. Or true. So let's let's move on. So that's not just an example of what is possible when you are when you allow compound interest to work in your favor instead of it working against you. Okay. So I'll go back to that slide. And then so I've also put here some simulations uh, of of those two links at the top. I also put them in the chat. And then they, they, are, they, they can simulate for you what the actual return on, in, in the stock market with some of the chairs I've listed here. 
the actual return uh, over, over the years. So I'm going to put these two links also in the chat. You can open any one of them. You can open any of the two. two. And this is just to, to show us what is possible and what people are experiencing. And I would say what I have experienced. Uh, it's, um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not your average uh, YouTuber that, you know, just they, they, they behave like CNN. They tell you what has happened. You know, please don't follow CNN for financial advice because they are newscasters. They, they, they tell you what, what has made it headline. You know, it's not what, you, you know, it's not what, they don't tell you how to prepare for you to be part of that headline. But they tell you when it has happened. Uh, so so um, so let's let me let me sh just show us that and then we simulate using those two links, uh, simulate a few of them. So if you uh, if you put two thousand in Apple over the last ten years in that account, you put it today and you close that platform, you close and you just you walk away, you throw away the the, the, the your, your phone, and you should come back ten years. This year, you open that phone, that account, you, you meet 28,000 pounds in that account. How many of us have, can afford 2,000 10 years ago? Now, how many of us bought Apple phone last about 10 years ago? Now, don't, don't signify. <laughs> I'm probably as guilty as you are, okay? So, so um, same thing with Nike. If, if you look at Nike, if you put in 2000 in Nike 10 years ago, today you have this. So you have an, uh, an annual return on, on Apple of 30%, and you have an annual return of 40% on, on, um, on Nike. If you, had, if you had put that money to Microsoft 10 years ago, you have 22,000 in your account right now. Uh, so an average of 27% per annum. If you remember that we did a compound interest based on 10%, you can see actual return from the market uh, for some of this. But again, you can't get it all right. There are some, some things you will buy that won't be as good as this, okay? So at the end of the day, your account balances out, you know, to become 10-15% uh, per, per annum. Coca-Cola will give you this. And, you, and there's a reason for, 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 for some of them are slow and steady, like Coca-Cola, like Walmart, like, Frota and Gamble and see that their return on a yearly basis is, is, is low. But what happens during recession is that all the same people are still drinking coke, people are still bathing, they are still using uh, toothpaste, they are still going to they are still eating McDonald's. So these are recession proof kind of stock which you must have in your, in your account. They are slow, they are steady, they are not, they are not like Microsoft or Apple uh, because nobody, you know, the other things are discretionary. You don't buy a new phone when you are hungry, but you still have to eat. When you when you when you're hungry, so McDonald's we still do well during 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 a recession, uh, but but some other uh, 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 some other stuff might not do so well. You might probably cancel your 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 Netflix uh, subscription during a very hard time, but you still have to use cream or use toothpaste, okay? And so that's why those ones are like that. Then you look at Facebook, you probably have an account. Uh, it will have given you a, a 26 percent return per annum over the last 10 years. Adobe, the popular PDF uh, uh, company, they do a lot of other things. Google or Netflix are like giving you 20, 24,000. Tesla, which is popular, we love the car and we see it, like giving you 61,000 in your account if you put 2,000, if you, live, in fact, not up to 10 years because they went public not too long ago. So you, you probably will have a, a 61,000 in your account by now for putting in 2,000. Uh, for those who know this, intuitive surgical, uh, 22,000 per annum on the average NVIDIA. Uh, you know, I call some of them hold money, some of them new money. But you look at NVIDIA, super microcomputer, uh, Palo Alto network, or advanced micro devices, they're kind of new money. They are kind of things that have to do with AI, that have to do with chips on your phone, chips on your system, on, on servers. Um, they have to do with, um, you know, with the new things, cyber security, and the, and the rest of them. They're kind of new, new, new kind of uh, companies, and these are they have been there for decades, but you know they are steady, they are stabilized, they, they, they are stabilized, and then they bring in income uh, regardless. So let's just play around with a few. Uh, they call them ticker. These are tickers, uh, especially for American companies. Uh, the these are tickers. You, you can just play around with a few of them, and you can see uh, for for yourself uh, what we what we're talking about here. So I would uh, minimize that, and I would bring up. I will click. Copy one of them. 
one of those links and uh, let's override this one. Uh, this is how that looks like. And uh, so the ticker for Apple is A-P-P-L. Okay, sorry, A-A-P-L, A-A-P-L. That's for Apple. Uh, if you look at 10 years ago, will be 2013. If you put in, if you had put in 2000, you do the calculation, you have 28,000 in your account right now. If you have, if you know any popular one that you, you, you want to put in the chat, please put in the tab. You can see how much it will probably return back to you. If you have any, if you have any uh, ticker you want us to, to look at, and that will, and let's see what it, that will return to you. Let me look at one of the, the ones I call the new, the new money. Let me look at, uh, um, let's look at the super micro, the SMCI which is one of, one of the ones I have. Um, that will have given you 47,000 from 2000. Just leave it there. It's passive income. You don't have to do anything. So like I said, I'm not talking discussing trading today. I don't day trade. It involves you working on a daily basis. It's not passive income. It's high risk. I have 10 reasons why I don't day trade. Uh, I've done that in the past. I've lost a lot of money. But this is you investing and having dividend and you're a shareholder of all these companies. So 2010 years ago, we'll give you 47,000 without you having to do any extra thing. Just put that money and walk away and you come back and you're able to sell and withdraw your money today if you want to do so. And so, so if you have if you have any ticker, let me see what people are putting in there. Uh, someone said Tesla, someone said TPE, Taiwan Semiconductor. Let's look at Taiwan Semiconductor. Let's see what that will give us. Uh, they want a ticker. Let, let me go and get the ticker for you. Taiwan Semiconductor is TSM. Okay, that's the ticker. That's TSM and um, TSM. That will have given you 14,000. Okay, if you put that in, someone's putting Tesla. Uh, and what's, what's Tesla's ticker? That's T S L A. So if you if you had bought Tesla, sorry, T S L A. Tesla. Yeah, Tesla will have give you sixty two thousand eight hundred if you bought it. Uh, put in two thousand ten years ago, and on and on. Like that, I've got more tickers in here. Someone said TPE. Uh, I said that would be 2033. So TPE, let me look at what TPE is. Uh, what's TPE? TPE. Okay, Polskar Energy. Okay, that might not come up. Uh, what will come up will probably be, be uh, someone said oil. Let's look for that for Chevron. For instance, Chevron is CBX. Let's see what Chevron will probably return back to you during that period. That's uh, CBX. CBX. Okay. Yeah, that will give you 5,900. Uh, if, you, if you look closely at it, uh, Chevron pays dividend, give you an additional 3% on a yearly basis. If you look at some of the new ones, they may not pay you dividend. So that's another thing you have to look at, at the stability and how big the company is. So over the years, if you look at, uh, so if you look at that chart for, 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 for Chevron, over the years, you've seen the way uh, it has grown. Over, over the years and pays a 3% dividend or whatever you put in on a yearly basis. So there are some, those hold and steady ones, and then there are some, the, the new ones. So let's, let's write down now. So that's, that's what's possible uh, in, uh, in, in, in the market. If you uh, know how to select your portfolio, uh, you can see a lot of them return as we have 7% here. Some of them might probably return negative. So it, it could, some return there can return negative to you. It's not all 
all the same as we also put down here that uh, past performance uh, quoted represent past, uh, performances quoted represent uh, past performance does not guarantee what the future results might be. So it's always good to put that out there. Uh, but when you have a good mix of your portfolio, where some are negative, some are, some are doing very well, you can have a very balanced account. And uh, like I said, don't predict the market. It's futile time to predict the market. You don't try to predict the market. So what you, what you try to do is you position yourself for the market. So if you look at the last 13 years, look at 2010, the market, S&P returns 14%, 2011 is 10%, come down to 2010, 2020 when uh, 2018 was negative uh, in the market. If you come to 2020, that was the year of coronavirus. That still came out to be a very good year, despite what happened in the first quarter of the year. Market returned 18 percent. Look at last year because of uh, inflation. 2022 it was 18 minus 18 percent that the that the market was minus 18 percent. And so far this year we, we already have 16 percent on the, on the S S and P this year. Now. I will focus on, on last year where we had a negative 18%. And I will show you a portfolio I started at the end of 2021, and then just one of my portfolios. And then you see uh, what, uh, what I'm saying that you don't predict the market. It's a waste of time. Uh, it's going down. You don't want to put your money. Take a look at this. So this, this chart is, uh, is, is from November. This is from November. To, to, to date. So the, the, the red bars are the days the market went down. And, and then the green bar, this could probably be a weekly, a weekly, a weekly one, uh, one chart per, can be per week. So the week that the market went down and the, and the, and the weeks that market went up. If you look at it, it's not all green. You have, and in fact, this was a, last year was, uh, the, the, the market went down so much last year. That was how we had minus 18, 18, 18%. But look at an account I started November last year. Look at how the account went. And now the account is in positive. Okay. So what do you do uh, when the market is going down? So there's something called dollar cost or pound cost average. Okay. Even when the company, when, when market is going down, you are positioning yourself. Don't say, oh, market is down today. I will not put money. No, you, you can't. You, so you can't time when the market will start going up. So all you can do is to position yourself for when that market will go up. History has told us that it will go up. Okay, uh, like the, the period through uh, the period that it will take for it to go up might differ from one downturn to the other. But we know that in the last seventy-five years, its market has been recovering. And in fact, from the Great Depression, market has been recovering up to up to now. So if you, so, so what do you do? You position yourself. So what was happening when market was going down? I kept positioning myself in a lot of these stocks. I've got quite a number of them. This this is just a little that the screenshot can take. Uh, I kept positioning myself. It was just like when you you know it's summer now. There's sales sales in the market. So when you have Microsoft down by thirty percent, that's thirty percent discount on Microsoft. What do you do? You buy. Then you bought some at a very high price. Now, maybe you bought some at 100, for instance, and it's now 70. By the time you average, and you now buy at 70, you average it, you know, that your average price is it's no, it's no longer 100. Your average, your average price is, you know, half of 170. So, so, so you just keep, you, you, you buy, but again, that's a way you need, you need, more, you need more intelligence, uh, financial intelligence to be able to know what to do in terms of, of stock buying before you know, that's what is called the, 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 the falling knife. You don't want to catch a falling knife. You don't want to, you want to, you want to, you want to buy what we, we call uh, a bounce, a dead, a, a dead, a bounce, uh, dead cat that is bouncing, you know. A dead, if you throw a dead cat on the floor to bounce up, we end up on the floor again. You don't want to, to, to put money into that. You, and you don't want to catch a, a falling knife. But what do you do when market is going down? Is that you have to understand what you have conviction about. That's why it's very, very important. You don't buy a stock unless you have strong conviction about it. You study their, their, their books, you know, they are making profit. You know what's happening in the market is general. There's inflation, so the market's, market is suffering from inflation and from, and from, you know, and from what has happened uh, during the coronavirus. 
And so things are going down. What, what do you do? You keep dollar, dollar cost, costing average into whatever you have conviction in. By the time the market starts taking off, you position yourself, you bought at the bottom. And so when the market starts taking off, you are enjoying a lot of benefits of what is happening in the market. And uh, if I go back to my browser, I will just quickly show us, uh, uh, just quickly show us a few things. So this is the US market, and this is NASDAQ. NASDAQ is the technology stocks. S&P is general for top 500. Dow Jones is the manufacturing stock like Caterpillar, like all these manufacturing companies. And so let's look at, um, as now at NASDAQ maximum. So if you look at here, this is dot com, this is dot com era when in 2000 when dot com crash happened, dot com bubble. Okay, it came down. Okay, but look at where we are today. This is the 2008 9 financial crisis. It came down, but it wasn't the end of the world. You see where we are today. This is uh this is coronavirus. It came down within three months, very sharp. You know, you think it's the end of the market. See where the market is today. Now, this is the current problem going on. Uh, inflation is come down, okay? But the market is recovering. And in fact, worse than inflation, has, impact has been worse than coronavirus on the market. It was sharp, it was a V recovery, V shaped recovery. This, is, this has been the inflation still going on. But you can see that inflation is easing. Market is picking up again. Probably in the next five years, it'll probably be somewhere here. So what am I saying? Don't be afraid of red down days. Don't be afraid of, don't say, you know, no, just what you need to do is to keep your cool, which are the things that we, we uh, the things I'm hoping that we'll be learning from, from this. And so the market recovers from, from what has happened uh, in, uh, in the past. If you look at, uh, uh, if you look at, uh, Dow, Dow Jones, if you look at the same, probably have the same pattern. If you look at S&P 500, um, it probably give you the same pattern. And this is free. If you go to Google Finance, you can always have this chart um, view. Okay, so let's move on from there. Um, okay, uh, going back to the slide. And my aim is for you to be able to do this yourself, uh, for you to, to have that confidence Open an account, put in, a, put in some, and because, uh, you know, if you look at this account, that's what is called fractional shares, which I will explain to, to us as we go on. You can put in as many, as little as $10 into a particular share. Okay, so exploring investment instruments. Um, okay, let's move. Uh, so if you want to go and have a cup of water, like tea, you can please do. Okay, so we we have a different instrument that you can you can invest in, and um, we have the ones in green are the ones we will be talking about. The ones in, in this color of green, we have the ETFs, mutual funds, and stocks. They are all they have to do with um, with um, stock exchange. You have buying and starting a business. You have savings, and then you have real estate. The rest are also instruments you can you can use. Some people buy good good bars and they keep them. Some trade in commodities, uh, some do option trading, some do the, the paper, uh, the treasury bills, treasury loads, bonds. And then I don't do bonds because I think I'm not old. I'm not that old. <laughs> I cannot leave it for the OPP because the return is very small, but it's very secured. And so I can still take some risks. So I do I do some of this. So so this is the one down here, just summary of, of money market, stock market, real estate, entrepreneurship, and angel investing. And that's you investing in, in new companies. So now I'll go to what applies to us in the UK. If you are not living in the UK, uh, you probably want to find uh, what applies to, to, to your area. Uh, um, so stock exchange, that's the market in which you, you securities are being sold and being bought. So these are some of the securities. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a market for it where people buy and sell them. And you know, we were away in, uh, in, in US earlier in the month, just, just this last week, where I, I didn't go to New York because, because of the training, but it just happened that we found ourselves in New York. And we, we went to, to, to NASDAQ um, in Times Square, took a picture there. So it's, it's an example of a, a stock exchange. And what they trade there is technology stocks. 
uh, the likes of uh, the likes of Ubu and the rest of them. So we have in, in you in you in UK you have the London Stock Exchange, you have uh, the New York Stock Exchange, you have Nasdaq, and in France it's called the CAC, DAX, uh, and Nikkei in Japan. They have their name uh, that you call those stock exchange where you buy and sell commodities. Um, investment. So you now have the investment platforms. These are tools. These are apps that help you to to easily buy and sell. Uh, uh, shares in company. Uh, there are quite a number of them. I use two of them, and I will give you the name of the ones that I that I use. I, I compare the prices, and I, and, and I think the, the price of the one I, I chose at that time. Um, I've also checked today to look at the prices of what they charge for you to buy and sell. And I think uh, they are still are very okay. So, like I've said, we are not talking about day trading today, and we are not. We do not also train on cryptocurrencies. They are not regulated. Uh, I got, for full disclosure, I have uh, 200, uh, 200 uh, pounds in cryptocurrency. That's just been, just been me, just, uh, just, just playing around. But it's, it's not regulated. We don't train it, and we don't advise uh, people to put uh, money in it. Some people have withdrawn their, their deposit for their, for, for their house and they put uh, in crypto, and it is where it is today. Okay, so it's not regulated, but when you have and what and, and, and for trading, when you, when you when you do day trading, you don't own the stock. You buy and sell up and down, but you don't own anything. It means if you buy and the market goes down, you lose money. Or when you and when, when you lose money, that money is gone. But if I should buy Microsoft today, Microsoft should go down. I remain a, I will remain a shareholder in, 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 in Microsoft. If it should come back in the next two, three, or four years. Then I will still make a profit because I have a share of that. Even when it's down, I'm still getting dividend. And so that is why investing and trading are two different things. Okay. So uh, for for specific to the UK now, we have investment for children, uh, government kind of approved uh, package for for children for young adults and for for and for adults. And I will go through all of them. You can you can start with as little as hundred pound in any of the following ones. Okay, so the first one is which, which you can open for your child or children today is, uh, is, is, the, is, the, is, is the ISA, is the, is the junior ISA. So you, you can open junior ISA, it could be savings towards their college or towards their first house, and then it's for children under the age of 18. Okay, you, can, you are allowed to put a maximum of 9,000 per tax year. And every all the profit you you make from that nine thousand is tax free, okay? Your profit is not taxed. And then you can and when they are eighteen, you can give the account to them when they are eighteen, and then they can continue with the account. So I put in a few companies here where you can open junior ISA. I use HL, okay? HL is the one I use. Um, uh, I've not used Fidelity before. I've not used Vanguard before. Uh, this is the one I use, and you, uh, and then you can start with as little as hundred pound, and you can start buying mutual funds and stocks from there. Okay, you can check the product, the provider for 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 their fees, and then tax rule could change. Another government could come in and say, okay, you want you want to come and raid your accounts. I uh, know people will protest, but let's see. But for 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 it being that anything you make from your ISA account is tax free. Okay. So put compound interest to work for your child, like you simulated in uh, earlier slide. Second account that you can open is that uh, investment account for young people, and this is for people who are between the age of eighteen and twenty nine and thirty nine. It's called Lisa, Lifetime ISA. It's called so the, the name is it, people call it Lisa, and then you can so that you are when you when you invest into these as somebody who's eighteen to to. To 39, you are allowed to withdraw that money to buy a house. If you are buying your first house, you are allowed to withdraw the money to buy your first house. Um, uh, government adds money to it. If you put 100 pounds into it, government will add 25 pounds to it. They do that for you on a monthly basis that you had money into it. They give you 25%, whatever you had to it. The maximum of uh, um, 1,000 that you put in a year because you can only put 4,000 in a year. So they, if you put 4,000 in a year, the government will give you 1,000 added to your money. You, so you have, you, you know, you have um, 
you, you have that amount in, in you that you can invest and trade with that money uh, for, for that particular year. And next year you continue. Uh, any money you, any profit you make on it is tax free. You can start with a hundred pound. Uh, and after 12 months, you can withdraw and buy a house or leave it or buy a house later. And if you don't, if you don't buy a house, you can leave it until you are age 60 and then it can form part of your retirement uh, uh, fund. And then also, uh, AJ Bell is, I put AJ Bell A and I put hl.co.uk. Uh, hl.uk, uh, as we've listed, is the biggest of them all in the UK. Okay, another one is the junior, junior SIP. SIP is Self Invested Pension Plan. And we also have for, for, for young people, you can also start that from the age of, um, so the LISA can, LISA is more like a, an ISA plus a SIP because if you don't use the money, it becomes uh, more like a pension plan, like a, like a SIP for those people who are 18 to, to, 18 to, to, to 39. And but for junior SIP, you can start a pension fund uh, for your child. Okay, more HSBC uh, backlist. Uh, oh, sorry, we, we uh, yeah, I, could, I didn't check uh, all of those ones. Okay, so you can put in 2,880 2, for your child into their pension. Even right now, government will have money to eat when you do so. And then uh, when they are 18, you can, they can take over the account. They can withdraw from it until you are 55. It's from Lisa where you can withdraw to buy a house. Uh, this one is a pension. The rules of other pension, uh, other pension rules apply to it and you know, UK's pension rule is the most, uh, UK tax rule is the most complex around the world, but they, can, they can't uh, withdraw until they are 55. At five, you can withdraw lump sum of 25% of your account without paying any tax on it when you are 55. You can also start with as, as little as a hundred pound today. So start thinking about mind that child and try and open uh, one of these accounts for them. And so the next one is ISA. ISA, anybody can open an ISA account. Uh, you can withdraw from your ISA account anytime you want to withdraw from it. You have an allowance of 20,000 per tax year. You can put in 20,000 into your ISA account in a year and whatever you make from it is not taxed. So you own a profit when you sell it, you, you, you don't need to report that in your, in your, in your self-assessment because it's from your ISA. You can only have one ISA per tax year. If you want to move to another, open another ISA account, the next tax year, you must stop paying into the one you have this year. So, and then you have another one, you pay into that one for the next, that's from April 6 to April 5, which is, I think is the tax year for the UK. You can put money into that. If you want to stop putting money into it, or move to another one, you can do that, but you can't pay into two ISA accounts in a year, in a tax year. You must just, it must be one. And, uh, and, and, and for that also, it's tax free, uh, so you can split your ISA allowance between share and stock. You can put some, in, if you want to do cash ISA, you can put uh, some in cash ISA, some in share shares, uh, however, and some in innovative, innovative financing, uh, you financing some, some, some it could be real estate and the rest of it. And so that's, that's the ISA accounts. I will advise every adult, I would suggest, let me use the word suggest, uh, every adult on this platform to have an ISA account and to also have the next one I'm going to talk about, which is SIP account. Uh, the ISA account, a SIP account for the children. They have the, the junior uh, SIP. They have the and then they have the the junior. Um, they have the junior ISAP. They have the LISA, and they have the junior SIP. And for adults, we have the ISA, and then we have the SIP. SIP is your SIP investment pension fund, you, which you can run alongside your your, your workplace uh, pension. And you can put in up to 60,000 per tax year. And I think they've removed the limit of 1 million of, you know, before your, 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 your total uh, pension is, can be more than a million and that has been uh, removed now. And then you can withdraw. And this when you put in money, government put money into, your, into, your, into it also for you. Uh, as you put money, government puts in 25% of whatever you put in into it because the money has been taxed. It's just a way of government returning your, your tax back to you. And if you're an higher taxpayer, you can also go and claim back uh, an additional. Uh, so it's government will pay you for 5% of your contribution, 5% if you are not uh, an higher taxpayer. So if you're an higher tax uh, 
uh, rate payer, you can through your account and claim more money uh, to make it for five percent be returned back to you, and you can put into the SIP account. So on the, as you put money, government will match it with that twenty five. Uh, percent. You can access that as your retirement when you are 55, we draw 25% of it cash uh, without you paying uh, tax on it. Okay, so the instruments are available to us in the UK, there are other ones. Uh, so, so, so we've done this in the evening so that you can take advantage, you can, you can open an account today. I actually want us to take action. Uh, this is easy to do. I will show us how to do it now and then uh, you so I, so that you're able to to you know to open an account. This is my own personal example. Uh, we've got SIP, we've got ISA uh, within uh, within within the family. We, we we are invested in over over if you look at 78 companies uh, stocks that we are invested in about 20 mutual funds and um, that we that we we have uh, investments in. And for us, uh, for uh, so and then. Like I have on this slide, it said the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. And the second best time is now. So what am I saying is that don't leave it to tomorrow. Uh, if you've not planted in the last 10 years, yeah, but you have an opportunity to plant that tree today. And these are some of the platform which I've, I've suggested you can plant. You are the free trade.io. Uh, if you use that link, you'll be given free share. Or I will be give, also given free share. If you don't want, you can use this or use this. Uh, and simple, download the app, go to App Store, go to Google Play. As we speak right now, you can pick up your phone, download the app and install it. So I want us to take that step to download the app first, put in your email. Uh, it's not as scary as you think and try and open an account. So but let, let, me, let me explain this to us for, for for HL, HL, uh, HL will charge you for every um, every deal that you make. So for every purchase that you make, HL will charge you. Okay, let me look for a website that you know where you can have the comparison for for this. Let's go to um, probably um, um, free trade. I uh, think free trade go. Yeah, that's logging you in. That's logging into that account I just showed you a while ago. Uh, I didn't log out of that. So uh, this this is the chart I just showed you. So I just started an ISA on that account. I, I, my ISA was with uh, HL before, but for, from, from April, I moved my ISA to, to free trade. Uh, this was the account I showed you a while ago. And you can, you can see yeah, it's a, a live account. It's not just a screenshot. And this is the one I just started in April. And if you want to join me in, in doing that, uh, this is this is just started in April. And uh, yeah, that's for today. Uh, and that's so this account is just building. Uh, and you so so what you do is you have money on a monthly basis. And so you can see some of them are red, but yeah, I'm not moved because I've gone for some dividend paying. Like Taylor Wimpy is a is a UK a company uh, that builds houses and they pay you a dividend of, of almost nine percent. And so they those that pay dividend then don't, don't tend to do well when it comes to how the stock moves. Uh, also gone for another dividend paying Barrett's under house building is they are paying dividend of uh, seven point eight percent. They don't tend to do well when they you know when they pay dividend. And gone for another one. They are kind of housing. I saw that they pay a lot of dividends. Six piece, uh, this place sixteen percent dividend. It's a lot. So kind of just bought it. But it's, so I'm just building an account. So if you want to join me building this account, you can start today and we can start building together. But you know, I started putting in some 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 new ones into it. You know, this cyber security, this data data cloud company. I put in Microsoft. I put in Google. You know. I put in this is a furniture company in the US. I start putting this on an electrical company in China. I started putting in new, new, new. Uh, so just building that, that, that account in the last two, three months. Um, so, okay, so I was going somewhere. Uh, let me log out of this. I was going to look at uh, the fees for the fees for free, free trade. Um, or oh, let me just do a Google search. 
trading platforms in the UK. You've got quite a number of them. And if you want to look at the pricing, let me see. So you have free trade here. You have H and L here. So that the two. So for free trade is zero. They don't charge you. They, you, you, they don't charge you dealing fee, but you pay a monthly fee when you when you when you pay a monthly maintenance kind of account uh, fee. Uh, let me say free. I want to get it from their website. Trade uh, fees. Okay. So that will give us. So if you don't do the basic account, basic account you can do you can do ISA on it. Any money you put into basic account, you pay tax on it. Uh, you don't want that to happen. So they they charge uh, six pounds or uh, seven pounds. I would say this charge six pounds on a monthly basis. Or when you do the plus, they, they charge eleven pounds, twelve pounds on a monthly basis. Or you can have your SIP and your ISA there. And you know the advantage of this is that because you do fractional buying, so what is fractional buying is the fact that you can you can you can instead of you buying uh, this is Caterpillar for instance is two hundred and fifty five to buy a single share, but you can buy same Caterpillar for ten dollar to give you zero point zero zero percent zero point zero zero portion of that share, and that's the advantage of using free trade. You don't get fractional shares through HL. Okay, I have that open here. You don't get fractional shares through HL. HL don't do fractional, fractional share, okay? But you, you can get that through, through uh, free trade. Uh, but you, you pay a monthly fee. For every share you trade on, you buy or sell on HL, you pay like 11 pounds, which I think is a lot. So if you are doing fractional shares of, or you, you can also do fractional shares. But when you are on free trade, you can buy 10, 10, 10, 10, dollar of 10 shares spreading your risk over 10 shares put 20 20 uh, dollars into it or put 25 25 pounds pounds into it but then you don't have won't pay for each of those transactions but you pay a monthly a monthly fee if you want to do isa and want to do this and your money of with them that you don't spend they give you interest on that money okay and so so i am on this plan uh, with uh, free trade so you can go ahead and download the app. If you downloaded the app and you, and then you um and you you sign in into it, you you can you you can give me a thumbs up. Okay, someone raised their hand. Grace Omoju, I was leaving the questions till when. Um, could you could you share where you find these shares to buy? Okay, where I find these shares to buy? Okay, I will just give you a. I'll give us an. So that's the next thing we are going to look at. Okay, they ask the how do you pick winning stock? Okay, so when you have all these things, how do you um, how do you know where to see these shares? How do you assess a share before you buy it? Okay, in the next uh, in the few minutes that we have left. So first of all, another free thing that we want us to do is that if you have a Google account, go to google.com/finance. So you can create a watch list. The first thing you do is you create a watch list. You open an account, I believe. If not, you can try. Be bold to do that. You, you need to take action. If you don't take, if you don't put in twenty-five pounds, you won't know what it can become. So I just encourage that you open an account with any of those two companies. I would say try start with free trade. If what you are putting is less than a thousand, you put less than a hundred pounds on a monthly basis. If you are putting like two hundred pounds on a monthly basis, uh, I would say you can try uh, uh, the, the, the free trade, okay? The uh, disadvantage of free trade is that they don't have bourgeois funds. Okay, I will explain what bourgeois fund is to us. Okay, uh, if you come around to, okay, let's finish this and I will go, I will go into what bourgeois fund is, okay? So if you have, want to put in like 50 pounds, 100 pounds on a monthly basis, go for freetrade.io, okay? Um, so this is Google Finance. Go to Google Finance. You have an MSN or Hotmail account. Go to Hotmail Money. Search for Hotmail Money. Yahoo Finance. Go to uh, go to. If you have Yahoo account, go to Yahoo Finance, and there you create a watch list. And I will show you what a watch list 
looks like. So I have I have my watch list on this account. I come around to, to here. This is a watch list. Okay, this is where you had. So this is the market today now. This is what the market has done today. Okay, some are positive, some are negative. Okay, but you have more positives than negative. And so you have this is a this is a watch list. You can create, you can add new ones to it. Can create, I have another watch list of things I'm looking at. They all kind of look good today. Uh, you have, I have a list of dividend stocks, those that pay good dividends. Uh, dividend. Uh, if you look at this, it pays seven point nine percent. It's a mining. It's a mining company. It pays. Uh, if you some of them, I'm I'm looking at them. If you look at Phoenix Group. They pay nine percent in dividend. Okay. So so you create a watch a, a watch list. So if I bring up a browser, if you go there, it'll probably give you a blank page. So if I say Google Finance. Google Finance. Oh, I've logged in here. Uh, let me sign out. So it should, it should give you a blank page where you can start adding companies. UK shares, uh, you have all of you have this. And so like 50-50 in the UK today for 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 the things like like I said, I for all of this company on my watch list, I by the grace of God, we own all of we invested in all of this company we have on this list. Uh, don't don't jump and pick any one of them because there's a timing to, as much as you don't have to time the market, you have to they have to be in the position where you you buy them. And we also invested in all of these UK companies, uh, all of these uh, in them. Uh, but this uh, this one is uh, just watch list. Don't have any sort of Alibaba. Showed up for some of these. So these are ones I just ones I'm looking at currently. Uh, this is a very promising one. Been looking at for a while now. Uh, it's a lending platform in the US, started by a lot of ex Google uh, Google uh, staff, and it's it's in the last um, six months. It's done seven hundred and seventy nine percent. The last six months this year is done two hundred percent. But if I show you in the last, uh, you know. It got here to 400 and it came down when there was crisis, when there was inflation crisis, just trying to pick up. So because they are new companies, they just went public. So they are kind of a 20, 2001, they went public. So when a company has just gone public, they are high risk. Some of them can still close down. They might kind of close down as in close down. So going back to that question of how do you pick a stock, picking a winning stock. So what, what do you do? Create your watch list. And then how do you create a watch list? Look at an area of interest. For, for me, when, when I started out, I look at it, Microsoft. Every company in the world uses Microsoft. Then Microsoft had a cloud version of, before we used to go to Tiba in the Kedja and buy a CD. And that CD you can use it for, for years. But now they are going cloud-based. So it means you pay a monthly subscription for Microsoft. Millions of people who are working in corporate organizations, they use Microsoft. That was my first curiosity for, for Microsoft. So if you look at what I put in the slide, let me bring up the slide. It's the fact that you look around you first. People queue for iPhone all the time. Okay, every year there is a cult-like following for iPhone. So that should, should, that's your first kind of curiosity that what's going on here? Why are everybody, why are we all buying these products? They must be making a lot of money, you know? So I look uh, and, and, and I've, I've kind of follow, follow that principle. And uh, you look at what experts are saying about a particular stock, okay? And then you do some financial studies of the stock, which I will show you a bit of it now. And then if you have a conviction about it, then you, you bite size, you do a little of it. What I normally do is do 200 pounds. If I, if I, if he's, 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 to be on my fractional share, I do 50 pounds and then I do 100 pounds and then you can now consolidate and build on the ones you really have conviction for. So it's, it's, it's simple, it's, it's more like an art. So, so I, I'll look at it, I look at service now because I work, uh, I'm an IT consultant, we do service now for a lot of companies. That's what all the banks use for their support. 
their ITIL uh, kind of incident raising, incident raising ticket. They use service now. We all know paper. Uh, we, we know this is for cyber security. This is for NVIDIA. All the crypto, cryptocurrency mining servers in the world, a lot of them use NVIDIA for, for their, for, you know, to mine cryptocurrency. So, you know, it was flaming the market. You know, currently AI, they are leading in AI and supercomputer, microcomputer, they are leading in AI. And so that's, is kind of boss for the market. You, we know the old, the good old ones, Pepsi Cola. You know, you, you know the good old one like uh, like Coca Cola. Like you see people queue up at at a, at a, at a McDonald's. But I will say that if McDonald's were to be in Nigeria, you see maybe they are using juju to attract people. People queue up at McDonald's all the time. So you should, you should be curious what's going on here. And so you, you move on from there to looking at them. Okay, what are they really doing? You you come around. If you, if you go on, on, that, on that same Google Finance, uh, you come around, scroll down a little bit, look at how much they are making. Microsoft is still growing year on year. Microsoft is growing. Profit is increasing every year. So that tells you Microsoft might be a good company to have their stock, okay? Their dividend is very small, okay? But, you know, yeah, for Microsoft is very small, I think about about two or zero point something percent or so, I can't remember. But you can see that they are, you know, year in, year out, they are doing well. Profit is growing. So you can dip deeper into balance sheet. If you know, you can see their balance sheet versus their, their, their you know, their, their asset versus liability is looking very good, 300 billion. If you can look at their cash flow, you know, you look at a few of those things and then you can make a decision that, let me try this out, okay? And you can make it to say, let me try, uh, that out. Okay, so we, we're running out of time. Uh, I've just been reminded. So, and that's how you build your watch list. Okay, and then if you look at the trend in the market, uh, you see, you look at the trend, you can see how it's going. See, if you see all these things, this is going to come down. What do you do? You don't panic. It came down five, almost 4.5% here. Look at this, it came down. 24%. Okay, if you look at this, during the, due to inflation, it came down 35%. So if you have a conviction that is Microsoft on sale, you rush to the market and you get a piece of Microsoft because you've done your due diligence. That's their dividend, is 0.7 in dividend, or because they have their high growth rate a company. They don't pay, they, they put their money back into research and development. And that's why they don't pay much dividend, okay? And you see company paying seven, 10%, they don't do much, much of RD again. They are just coasting. And so you, you, you don't have too much of that in your portfolio. So Macro was down 34%, what do you do? You, you love it, you buy more of it. And then there's a recovery going on, it's done 39% back to where it was before uh, this issue of, uh, of, uh, of uh, what do you call it now? Inflation came into being. Okay, this was coronavirus for Microsoft. It drops 25%. What do you do? You don't panic because you've done your due diligence. What made Microsoft came down wasn't Microsoft. It was just the news. Microsoft is still Microsoft. And so it, from there, from coronavirus, it's done more than 100%. Okay? And so you have that. We have 10, just 10 minutes left uh, for this. And um, so I'll just go back to this slide and I will run through uh, so I can respect uh, I can respect your time. So that that's how you, you choose stock into your uh, watch list, and from there you start making uh, uh, start making start buying what you want to buy into bite size investment, like I, like I have said, and then you ease into it gradually. And then if if it goes down, if you believe in it, when it goes down, you buy a little bit more. If it goes down, you buy a little bit more. If you really believe in what you are doing, and then. See, any money you will need for the next two years, don't put in the stock market. You give yourself five years at least for the stock market. Don't, if you have a deposit for your house, you want to buy your house next year, don't put in the stock market, please. It's not a quick, a get rich quick way of making money. Don't. Uh, because anything will happen, it could be down for one or two years. A coronavirus uh, and the inflation has been around for the next, for the last one or two years. Uh, so again, even though you can make money during those period, but you don't put any money you will need in the next two, three years, please don't put in the stock market. 
don't try to say you want to double your money. Anything that promises you more than 10 to 15%, any investment that promises more than 10 to 15% per annum, please be weary of it. When you promise more than 50%, I look at it the other way. Because you have to protect your, your capital first. That's the first rule. Protect your capital. Okay, there are savings options. Because inflation is going up, savings account is becoming lucrative. You can get 5% of your savings account, but, but not like what you will get. Uh, and, then, and if you have short-term money that you need in a year's time, put it in NS and I. That's where that's if you are going out, if you are saving towards holiday, just leave it in NS and I. You are saving something you need in the next one year, two years. You can you don't want NS and I won't give you it's a zero percent interest, but you have a chance of winning the million. And they kind of distribute, they just distribute the, the, the profits randomly to everybody on a yearly basis. It's very secure, it's government backed. You are loaning government money. It's premium, it's called premium and bond. And then you can just, and then for real estate, uh, we don't have that time for me to go into real estate today, but, but it's a good uh, uh, investment you can leverage on. I have an example of an investment of, uh, of 10,500 10, years ago that I think I've become half a million today. Um, I won't have time to explain all that. Then you can go into entrepreneurship uh, where you either buy a business or you build a business from scratch. And um, there are people who are infopreneurs and uh, your side of Zoom is a boss for today and all of that. And then, uh, so we have how many more minutes? We have eight more minutes. Uh, so in summary, this is what we discussed today. I want to believe, if you think you've learned something, can you put a yes in the chat for me? If you think you've learned something today, can, you, can I have that yes in the chat uh, to encourage me a little bit uh, to do more of this? And if you know anybody, Thank you. If you know anybody, um, uh, who, if you know anybody uh, that you think would benefit from it, from this, please share with them. And then from from this, um, uh, so so far today, uh, we've looked at all of these things, and I want to believe you, you've learned. And but beyond this is also the the second class that we're offering. We're offering a master class, and the the beauty of that is that we can now go deeper into what we've learned today to us it won't be enough for, for, for me to make uh, a, a very for me to be able to provide the kind of mentoring that you, you, you require if you're interested in taking this further uh, we have a master class coming up uh, and that master class is is, is is coming up in August it's going to be a Saturday we have five hours together on a Saturday 19th of August of 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., the cost is 250 per participant. So I now so to, to, to do that. And then what do you stand to, to gain? We go into technical analysis. How do you look? When I look at a chart, I know what the chart is saying. How can you know what the chart is saying? Look at fundamental analysis. How do you look at other things apart from the chart that going around a company for you to be able to say, okay, I have conviction about this company. I want to buy the stock. Uh, we'll be able to analyze mutual funds, their components, and ETFs, their components. Uh, we'll be able to formulate a strategy for yourself on what to buy, which sector to play. Is it, is it, bio, is it biomedical? Is it, is it technology? You know, your risk appetite. Uh, we will have a community where we, we discuss uh, on a daily basis things that we are buying and selling. And other people, if you've been doing this before, you're welcome in the community after this training. And you can also bring in your wealth of experience. What are you doing? We can share uh, knowledge together. And then you we can you can leverage on each other's experience, and then you can become start doing you know doing this big time for yourself, no matter how much you put in in the in, in your stock on the on the monthly basis. And then you I can share my my portfolio like I have on that on on that on that watch list what I've invested in over over seventy companies I've invested in. I can tell you which one I have still have strong conviction about which one I'm about to sell. Or uh, move on, move, move away from, and, and the rest of it. And then we look at uh, debt management strategy and what has worked for us. Uh, we'll be sharing um, how that works uh, with you also if you need that. And then, and then I will give you ten reasons why I don't day trade. Uh, some people still do it, but for it's not what I do. Uh, then look into property investment uh, a little bit. Uh, and then uh, for the first, first five people who, who register for this, we have a one-on-one -on -one call together and we can discuss your, your vision and your and build your strategy together uh, for you to be able to uh, proceed. So it's, uh, so 
So that, that brings us to the end of, of the class. If you want to register for the master class, the link is here. I would say go for it. You will not regret going for it. I wish I'd known more about this, like I said, 10 years ago. Uh, no way to put your 1,000 today for, you know, and look at what it could become in the next five years. Before you know it, five years is here, and it's gone. Before you know it, 10 years is here. Before you know it, that, that child is going to the university, and you don't want them going to take a loan to go to the uni. Uh, you, you want them to be debt free when they're out of uni. And I think we hold them that much. And I, I, so, so I want us all to be able to, uh, to, to come around and let's, let's, let's go on this journey together. Um, I've been able to build portfolio in tens of thousands uh, of pounds and I believe you can do the same thing. And it's, it's, it's not rocket science at all. And I can show you uh, the mistake I've made so that you don't fall into the same uh, pitfall. Okay, so questions. Uh, someone's raised their hand.